Hello to all my wonderful partners and my family now, not just my partners. And I want to say thank you for all your birthday wishes yesterday. I was so touched. Really, I was. I want to say thank you from my heart. Love you all, you wonderful people of God, my family, my partners. And today, today, this Friday, I just have it in my heart to talk to you about something that I've seen happen over and over that's hurt a lot of Christians, a lot of people. And I want to talk to you about staying safe in that area. Chad, I know two people today who are in prison because they wanted to make money quick. When people are after money, <clears throat> they get in trouble. A lot of these pyramid deals you talk about today are not biblical. And I want to talk to you about that. So tell, tell, you, tell your friends, that's what I want to really deal with. I'm going to show you scriptures. I know three people today in prison who are still in prison who are Christian people, one of them a pastor's son, who will probably be in prison for the next 50 years, some of them for life, some of them for a long time, who were ministry people. One of them was uh, not a, a, exactly a pastor, but almost a pastor. And he just had this horrible way of convincing people that he can make them quick money if they give him you know, whatever money he was asking for. And a lot of preachers got in trouble, who are not in prison, naturally, but they gave him money, and he took that money and bought himself a yacht. I had to go and testify in court against him because of what he did. That was in Dallas, Texas. I'll never, never forget that. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm 68 now. I've learned a lot about life. And in ministry, nearly 47 years. And I've learned so much about this one thing. And I just want to talk to you. Just like family, you know, family time. Don't get involved in quick money. Because quick money is cursed by God. Totally cursed. So if, if anyone approaches you and says, Hey, listen, give me so much money and I'll give you back more by whatever. Don't do it. Just don't do it. It's not in the Bible. So I'm going to wait till you all get there. I mean here with me because some of you are still coming on. And I want to really talk about this. I want to talk about the importance of protecting yourself from people who want your money so they can make money and steal your money. You know, so we talk about prosperity. Prosperity has a lot to do with being smart. You know, with being gifted, with, with being wise. It's not about giving and receiving. And this is not what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about how to stay safe from people who call themselves Christians, who, who ask you to invest money with them, but they're not doing it biblically. They wanted to, you know, give me this and I'll give you that tomorrow. It just is not in the Bible. So let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5. And I'm going to start slowly. I'm going to show you, you know, God's gift to us. Because this is God's gift to us. God wants to bless us properly. Properly. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 18. Behold that which I have seen. It is good and comely. The word comely, by the way, here means fitting. Something fitting. Something right. For one to eat and to drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he hath taken under the sun all the days of his life, which God gives him. It's his portion. God wants us to do things right, you know. He, he wants us to do things that are fitting, that are good. He wants us to eat and drink and enjoy the good of our labor, our labor. People who want to make Quick money are lazy people. Forgive me for being blunt. They just want to make quick money and not work for it. God's gift is God blesses us when we work for it. So look at, let, let's look at verse 19. Every man also to whom God had given riches and wealth and had given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion 
and to rejoice in his what? Labor. This is the gift of God. If you want to prosper, you've got to work for it. Not just give to the Lord, which is very important, but you've got to work, work for it. You know, I love what it says in the scriptures. But let me just first say a few things before I, I talk about that. I think every day we make choices. Am I going to do the right thing? Am I walking in truth? Am I making the wrong choice? So God has created spiritual laws that determine who receives wealth and who remains poor. And it all has to do with, well, Jesus said in Luke 10, 7, he said, the laborer is worthy of his hire. So only those who labor are worthy to receive the blessings of God. So basically, no work, no reward. <laughs> no work, no prosperity. In Deuteronomy, <clears throat> let's go together to Deuteronomy. And look, you know, we, we all love to uh, repeat this scripture, you know, about the blessings of God and God wants us to prosper. We all agree. But look what it says. This is Deuteronomy 28, 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give rain to your land in its season, and to bless all the work of your hands, and you will lend to many nations and not borrow. Now, everybody quotes and repeats, you lend and not borrow, you lend and not borrow, you lend and not borrow, and they all miss what it says right before that. It says the Lord will bless the work uh, the work of your hands, then you'll be able to lend and not borrow. God never promises to bless hands. He only promises to bless working hands. I repeat, God never promises to bless, to bless people's hands. Oh, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I have blessed hands. Well, God never promised that. He never said, I'm going to bless your hands. He said, I'm going to promise the work. I'm going to bless, I should say, the work of your hands. That's what he, what he promised us. And I will bless the work of your hands. And you will lend unto many nations. And you will not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you'll be above and not beneath. But he just said, you got to work for it. <laughs> you got to work for it. Look at Deuteronomy 30 verse 9. I hope you're learning something. And the Lord thy God will make thee plenteous in every work of your hand, in the fruit of your body, in the fruit of your cattle, in the fruit of your land. For the Lord will rejoice over you for good. But what does it say? The Lord will make you plenteous in every work, in every work of your hand. There was a guy that went to some preachers, a lot of preachers, and um, <clears throat> he went to some big names, big names. I'm talking about like some of the famous preachers, and convinced them that he was legitimate. He opened a, a fake office in California, he got uh, fake products in his building. He convinced those preachers that he was making business with Mexico and China. And they gave him hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, not knowing he was a crook. And this guy was in the ministry. He called himself a pastor. And some pastors promoted him. And one day a pastor called me. He said, you really need to look at this, Benny. This was back in the 80s, early 90s, some of that. No, sorry, sorry, it was in the 90s. Now, I respected the man who called me very much. 
I said, it can't be real. I said, because I've seen them come and go like that, you know, these people who are not honest. Oh, no, no, he said, this is the real thing. You need to go see it. And then I had someone else call me. Now, I'm talking about two well-known, world-known, uh, worldly-known preachers that I still love and respect. One of them today is in heaven, but the other is alive. And so I had a second preacher call me. You really need to look at this. You're going to miss out. So I said, okay. I mean, I look at it. I was still learning then. <laughs> I won't do, I will not ever do this today. I'm much older and much smarter. So anyways, I went to his office, massive office, with staff, elegant staff, pictures of him with all these important people. I'm t I mean pictures with politicians, business people, everywhere. And I thought, well, maybe, maybe this guy is so whatever. Boy, that was a big one. That was a big de deception. I gave him some money, but not a whole lot. I thought, ah, you know, I'll just, maybe if it works. About two months later, he, sent, he sends me a check for double of what I gave. I thought, oh, wow. I went to see Otto Roberts and Evelyn. Evelyn. Evelyn says, now, Benny, you really don't believe in that stuff, do you? I said, well, the guy sent me back a check. And Odell said, really? You wait now and see that he's a crook. I was stunned. But thank God for Odell. Odell warned me, said, Benny, the Bible is against it. Stop now. now that, was, that was, today's 2020. We're talking 30 years ago, 25, 30 years ago. And then I get an invitation from another pastor who was a friend to this guy, who was my neighbor, who I loved very much. I still do. He's in heaven too today. He said, um, we're, we're having a, a gathering today on a beautiful yacht in Newport Beach. We want you there. So I go, and this guy now just bought a yacht. This guy, this crook, bought a yacht. Sorry to call him that because that's exactly what it was. <laughs> the second I walk on the yacht, I see all these people serving him and guests here and there. Massive boat. And everything in me knew, he's a crook. Get out. So I looked at him. I said, uh, so-and-so. I said, it looks like God is blessing you. He says, I am blessed. I was born to be blessed. He went on with all the religious things they say. But everything in my heart knew he's a crook. I called a lawyer and I said, would you look into this? The lawyer called me said, there's something fishy about this. I gave back the money he gave me that day. I said, I don't want it. Take it back. He, oh, no, no. I said, no, no, I don't want it. Take it back. When I went on his yacht, my radar came on. <clears throat> so I give him back the money, even though he didn't like it. I didn't care. I said, no, no, no. I, don't want no I want nothing to do with it. That man is in prison today. He deceived a lot of people, and are mostly preachers. And I testified against him in Dallas at court. And I was stunned what he did. He had my signature that he copied from my, my check and put it on documents to show people, oh, Benny Hinn believes in me. I was sitting, the judge was there, the, the jury were sitting in front of me, all the lawyers, the place is packed, the courtroom. I got so angry. And he's sitting, that boy was sitting in some little area by himself. I was stunned. I got so angry in court that I told the whole court that I never signed those papers under oath. I learned a big lesson from that. And this is when I began looking at the Bible. 
and I discovered in the Word. Whoa. God already warned us. Quick money. There's deadliness in it and danger. So the Bible says something about <clears throat> labor. People that won't, don't work. People that don't work are asking for trouble. So in all your labor, the Bible says, there's profit. And I just felt yesterday, and I, mostly really this morning too, tell God's people, because I'm hearing again, you know, because of what's going on on earth, people are afraid, they're investing money with people who are not honest. So Proverbs 14, and, and so sadly this happens often in the church. Anyways, it says in verse 23, in all labor there is profit, but the talk of the lips tendeth only to what? Poverty. In all your labor there is profit. Ow. But the talk of the lips, when someone tries to convince you that he can make you money real quick, you end up in the poorhouse. You're not shocked. That, that is shocking. That is so shocking. So, um, the Bible tells us to build slowly, to, to, to do what is, must be done patiently. If you look at Proverbs 21, because, you know, quick, quick things just are not in the Bible. Uh, Proverbs 21, 5. The thoughts of the diligent, the thoughts of the diligent, tend only to plenteousness. But everyone who is hasty to want. The thoughts of the diligent, the one who is careful with his money, then he's going to end up to be blessed. But everyone who's hasty to make money is going to end up in want. Um, Proverbs 20, 21. I'm, I'm, look, I'm just giving you the Bible, okay? So Proverbs 20, verse 21. Listen to this one. It says, An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning, but the end shall not be blessed. May I read that again? An inheritance may be gotten hastily at the beginning. So you may get money like quick, but the end will not be blessed. Look at uh, 28, Proverbs 28, 22. The book of Proverbs is full of such blessed advice like this. 28, 22. Whoa, look at that. He that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye. He that hasteth to be rich has what? An evil eye. And considers not that poverty shall come upon him. Now that man is in prison today. He's not rich. He lost everything. He that hasteth to be rich hath an evil eye and considers not that poverty shall come upon him. Wow, wow. Scary stuff, huh? So, money is an important subject to God. Money <clears throat> is mentioned 2,000 times in the Bible. 2,000 times. But, you know, we have to be faithful to the Lord. We have to do it right. We have to work hard and we have to give to the kingdom of God. Not go after quick money because somebody says, oh, you know, if you'll give me so-so and I'll give you back so-so. It doesn't work that way. So let's, let's look at some beautiful scriptures that now really tell us how to prosper uh, properly. Um, every day we make a choice. I said that earlier. Whether we believe truth or not believe truth, whether we work hard or not work hard, or whether we 
decide to eat our seed or, or to sow our seed. I don't want to boast. I really don't want to boast. I work very hard. I'm not who I am today because I've been lazy all my life. Chad will tell you and others will tell you, I work very hard. But I love it. It's, 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 it's something that I was, I was trained when I was a little boy by my dad. My first job was when I was 14 years old, for goodness sake. I went and worked at a candle store, making candles in Jaffa. I was 14. But I learned heavy lessons about the importance of work, the importance of working. I talked to a guy one day, I said, so what are you doing for a living? He said, I'm waiting upon God for a ministry. I walked away and said, here's another loser. I was, I was working for the Catholic school board when God called me into the ministry. I was working for the Catholic school board on, in Toronto, Canada on Eglinton Avenue. And uh, I began having invitations. People, things began opening up. And I went to my supervisor. I said, I got to leave. And, I, and she was a lovely lady. She said, why? I said, I'm going to go and preach the gospel. She said, go do it. So I worked at the last moment. There's a lot of people today waiting to be in ministry so they can be rich and make money and get offerings won't last <laughs> hard work I'm giving you golden advice today you work hard God will bless the work of your hands don't go for quick money it's a lie and you support the work of the Lord with what you have not with what you do not have you, you give God what you're able to give God. God never asks us to give him things we don't have. So prosperity then is a choice. And like I said earlier, you know, God has given us spiritual laws. And if we obey them, we're going to be blessed. Quite simple. So let's look at Proverbs 24. We're going to look at verse 30. Oh, this is marvelous. And then I'm going to pray with you. Okay. It says, I went by the field of, of the slothful and by, by the vineyard of the man, word of understanding. It was all grown up and there was nothing on it. Why? Because the man just did not do what was right. He didn't want to work. But the Bible says very clearly that when we give to the Lord's work, that's when the blessings of heaven fall upon our life. So Proverbs 11, verse 24, 25. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray with you. So it's, 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 it's time to do things right. It's time to obey the commandments of the Lord. Well. Wow. Anyways, let's just read something that is so precious to me. Uh, verse 24 and verse 25. There is, this is Proverbs 11, 24, 25. There is that scatters and yet increaseth. And there is that withholdeth more than is meat. So you, you've got someone who's always giving and someone who's always keeping back, but it tends to poverty. There is one who scatters, is always increasing. But there's one who's holding back and is always in trouble financially. The liberal soul, the word liberal means the generous soul, shall be made fat. Now that word fat means rich in, in, in the original Hebrew. So the generous soul shall be rich and he that waters shall be watered also himself. So I pray that what I said today is helping you. I pray that what, what I said today is something you'll remember. The work of your hands. But here's something I want to also say. Don't waste your money. Please don't waste your money. You know, uh, God cares about money so much that he mentioned it 
20, uh, sorry, 2,000 times in the Word of God. Think about 2,000 times. How much God must care about the way we handle it, you know. So, Proverbs 21, verse 20, says something very important. It says, There is treasure to be desired, and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spends it. Listen, there's a treasure to be desired, and oil in the dwelling of the wise. There's treasure and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spends it. So be careful how you spend your money. Remember, haste is waste. Truly, really, haste is waste. And be careful what you do with what God gives you. You work very hard for it. I'm going to pray right now that the Lord will bless you and give you wisdom. And I just pray that what I shared is helping you, even though maybe you've never gone through this. You will. <laughs> Somebody's going to come up to you one day and show you and, and make you these empty promises of making money quick. It's not going to work. Let's pray. Let's, let's believe God to protect you. Father, in the sweetest, in the most wonderful name of Jesus, I pray, Lord, right now that you will speak to your people. You'll bless them. You'll prosper them and protect them, Lord. Let this be a time for them of wisdom, blessings. Lord, give them those who don't have a job. Give them a good job. Give them even a better job than what they had before. Those who are lacking financially, bless them, Lord, with a great ideas on how to do it right and how to be blessed financially. You, you said you'll bless the work of our hands. Bless the work of their hands. Sweetest Jesus, bless the work of their hands. In the glorious name of Jesus, I pray. And Lord, as they give today, bless them financially. Bless them from heaven above and protect their future. And God's people said, Amen. Love you much. It's not often I'll be talking to you like this, but I love you enough as my family to just talk to you from my heart. Now it's time to give to the Lord's work. As you know, the Bible says, Give it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall man give to your bosom. Today I spoke to you from my heart as my family, because I love you. But because I love you, I want you also to obey the word of God in giving to the Lord. So. You can give right now by going to BenihinMinistries.org on the web or give it on the platform you're watching me on where it says donate or give or simply text it BHM45777 BHM45777 Much love. I'll see you Monday. Have a blessed weekend. Bye-bye.